Hi everyone and welcome back to the Wasatch Photonics YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue our Enlightened series with a video on how to navigate the software once it has been downloaded and the spectrometer has been connected. If you need help downloading the Enlightened software or connecting your spectrometer, please watch the first two videos in our series, which can be found linked in the description box below. If you are following along in the product manual, you'll want to jump to section 4.1 entitled Scope Capture. If you need a copy of the manual, there is also a link below in the description box. To make sure your spectrometer is properly connected, listen for this sound. After the USB cable has been connected to the computer, laptop, or tablet you are using. If you miss this sound or just want to triple check your connection, go to the Start menu and find your device manager. Locate the LIBSUB folder and expand it to see that Wasatch Photonics Spectrometer is listed. After these sanity checks, we can launch the Enlighten software by double-clicking on the Wasatch Photonics icon on your desktop. The default mode that is open is called Scope Mode, specifically referred to as Scope Capture in the remainder of these videos and in the manual. This mode allows the user to view and obtain counts directly from the detector and offers a way to ensure the experimental setup is appropriate when the user is ready to start collecting meaningful data. Please keep in mind that counts are displayed in completely arbitrary units. There are 14 main areas in this window that all users need to be aware of. The first is called Window Title, and this is where the software version and model and serial number of the spectrometer can be found. Next is Spectroscopic Techniques slash Operating Modes pull-down menu. The options for Spectroscopic Techniques include Raman, Reflectance slash Transmission, Absorbance, and Relative Irradiance. The only non-spectroscopic option, which we refer to as operating mode, is called hardware. The details and mechanics of each spectroscopic technique and the hardware operating mode will be described in more detail in future videos. The third area is called functional tab, found below the window title. And there are essentially two options here, setup and capture. The Setup tab contains all configuration settings, and the Capture tab contains all the data collection functionality. You can see here that the Active tab is always colored red. Next, we have a set of four VCR-type buttons directly above the spectrum chart. The Pause, Save, Step, and Step and Save buttons serve in a variety of ways. Upon launching the Enlightened software, the teal colored reading in the spectrum chart is continuous or free running, which means it jumps around a lot. So the user can use the pause button to literally pause the reading to look at it more closely. You can see that once the pause button is used, it changes to continuous acquisition with the triangle pointing to the right. The button with the triangle pointing down is referred to as the save button. The user can manually save any measurement in either free running or paused mode. Future videos will discuss batch data collection. So for now, all that we will say about the next two buttons shown by the red circle is that they are used mostly when the user has set up batch data collection. The fifth area we've mentioned a few times already in this video is called the spectrum chart. It takes up the majority of this window. This area will display live spectral readings, or pause readings as we just discussed, and any measurements that the user has loaded previously from saved sessions. Navigating the spectrum area is a topic that will be discussed in future videos, so stay tuned for more information. The next is user controls. This scrollable column on the right side of the software window houses a multitude of spectrometer and view controls. The controls that are visible will vary depending on the spectrometer that is connected because some of the controls are very specific to the type of hardware being used. Some of these controls include transmission options, light source control, detector control, x-axis, scan averaging, boxcar smoothing, baseline correction, and temperature control. There is a lot to say about each of these functions and those details will also be discussed in a future video. The seventh area, called System Status, is found at the bottom right-hand corner of the software window beneath the user controls. The user can keep track of system components such as hardware, shown as HW, light source, shown as light, and temperature, shown as temp. At a glance, with these three status indicator colors, green, yellow, 
and red. To help keep track of the status indicator options for each of the system components, please reference the table on your screen. This table can be found as is in your product manual. Go ahead and pause your screen if you want to take a closer look. Technically, there is a fourth color option, gray, which is shown when the feature isn't applicable for the current setup. For example, in my window, light is grayed out because the visible near-infrared spectrometer that I have connected currently doesn't have an internal light source, such as a laser. The eighth area to note is the status bar, which simply displays quick metrics about the current measurement, and it is found directly below the spectrum chart here. Next is the measurements column, which can be found on the left-hand side of the software window. This column keeps track of the measurements that have been saved during acquisition. It fills with graphical thumbnails of each measurement there are several features that will be discussed in further detail in future videos. The saved data controls can be found beneath the measurements column, and this area allows the user to load previously saved or acquired measurements from your disk or hard drive. You can also export a series of saved collections as a single file, which can come in handy for offline analysis. A prefix and or suffix can be added to the file name as well. Furthermore, Notes can be embedded into the file itself if desired. Area number 11 is quick click view toggles found in the upper left corner above the spectrum chart. Here, the user will find buttons to lock and unlock the y-axis, zoom in and out to full width chart mode, store and or clear a quick dark measurement, and store and or clear a quick reference measurement. If a dark or reference measurement have been stored, then the icon will turn red to signify this. To clear a stored dark or reference, simply click the corresponding red icon until it turns back to its original color. Next, the status message area found between the VCR type buttons and area 13, the copy to clipboard button, displays brief status messages for about three seconds before disappearing. One example of when this is used is when batch collection has been enabled and the status message lets the user know which measurement is being collected out of the total number of measurements that the software has been set to collect. Moving just to the right of the status message area, we find the copy to clipboard button. This allows the user to quickly copy the currently displayed spectra and x-axis to the system clipboard for pasting into other applications such as Microsoft Excel. Lastly, we find the graph legend in the upper left corner inside the spectrum chart by default. The legend, however, can be moved to anywhere within the chart by simply clicking and dragging it as desired. This feature identifies each individual measurement in the spectrum chart. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below or please visit our website to contact us. We hope that this was instructional in helping you navigate the Enlightened software upon initial launch. Have a great one.